Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Mindful. Y'all, today I have a very, very special guest, and I, I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank him for joining our show today. So today we have Coach Ken, and Coach Ken is a personal development and relationship coach with over 20 years experience coaching singles and couples through resolving conflict and building connections. Coach Ken has been featured on MTV, Fox, Lifetime, Newsweek, and the Home Shopping Network. I don't think I ever met anybody that's been on the Home Shopping Network, but uh, he is very active on social media and has been viewed several million times on all platforms. He and his wife have been married over 20 years and together are known as the Grand Canyons. I think that is so cute. They are also the creator of a relationship game, which is available for purchase called The Moment of Truth. Y'all, please, please, please join me in welcoming Coach Ken to the Let's Be Mindful Show. Hey there. How are you? Be mindful. I love it. Thank I love you. It. Thank you. And I do appreciate you joining. Uh, absolutely. I was super excited that you accepted the invite. So I'm going to start real basic. Um, how did you get into relationship coaching? Since you've been in the game for over 20 years, how did you get into this field? Well, I got into the field uh, quite quite honestly. I, I never saw myself as a relationship coach, you know, because in my prior life, I always tell people I was Ken before I was Coach Ken. And in that, in that life, I did a whole bunch of foul things, um, you know, lying and, you know, whatever else comes with that. Um, but about 15 years ago, my wife and I were headed for a divorce court. And um, I tell people, I can see how people get divorced I, because they say every seven years we evolve. And sometimes we evolve together, we evolve apart. But our problem was we just couldn't communicate. I didn't realize I was a terrible communicator. I didn't realize it. You know, she was a terrible communicator and 98% of the people out there are. And I always tell people, um, you only, why is it that we get training on everything else in our jobs, everywhere else, but we don't get training on relationship stuff. We don't get training on communication, conflict resolution and all of that. And so 15 years ago, um, we were just, we, she couldn't stand me. I couldn't stand her. Everything I did, uh, she misconstrued, vice versa. And one day we were arguing, you know, like I always tell people, I've never touched my wife physically, but the words that I shared were just so hurtful and make no mistake about it. Her words were hurtful too. Um, so this particular day we were arguing, arguing, arguing. She, I remember she was at one part of the house. I was at another part and she said these words. She said, can we just go somewhere? To this day, I asked about about six months ago, why did you say that? She said, I felt like our home had become a place of dysfunction. And so we rolled out. I didn't want to go, but we did. And unbeknownst to me, we were riding. You know how you ride with somebody, you're mad. They're yeah. looking out their window. You're looying at your mm -hmm. window. You, ain't mm -hmm. you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. But see, we had one thing. She said, listen to this. She said, I'm hungry. Now, I was hungry, too, but I didn't really want to act like, yeah, let's go get something to eat. Mm -hmm. So, but the funny thing was I had just gotten off a reality show, The Biggest Loser. I lost 150 pounds on the show. And I wasn't even eating hamburgers at the time. But I only had $7 because during the time when I was on the show, I had to turn away um, $100,000 worth of business. So I didn't really have any money. But I had $7. I said, I ain't got for $7. She said, pull in the Wendy's. We pulled in the windows. Just so happens they had a special junior double cheeseburger for $2.99 and a drink combo package. Mm -hmm. And I and she got it, I got it. I had six dollars and some change. And so as I'm pulling through the drive-thru, she says, pull over in a parking spot. Now I didn't want to. I was like, for what? She said, please. First time she had said please in a long time. So I, I pulled over, right? Mm -hmm. And she turned to me and looked at me and said, I didn't get married to get divorced. I want to, we're going to sit here till we figure out what was wrong with us. Mm -hmm. So two hours and 42 minutes later, what happened was we realized that we were poor communicators. So mm -hmm. we came up with a conflict resolution system that not only saved our marriage, it's helped me save 298 other marriages. And so after then, I knew I had a greater purpose. Now, I didn't get in it right away because I was still walking the path. But mm -hmm. uh, but that was the catalyst to start it. Um, that, along mm -hmm. with another situation of this other young lady who I apologized to for, for lying and being deceitful, 
Um, those things made me realize that, you know what? There is a greater calling on my life to take my skill set, because I was still mm-hmm. training and everything, to use it. And I was understanding human behavior to mm-hmm. help people change that part of their lives. And so, Allah, Coach Kim was born. Okay, thank you. Now, I look, I know that relationships, the number one reason why they say relationships fail is because of communication. It is. We- hear each other now and I'm get. I, I do have experience with poor communication you know like I said I am divorced um but was it communication it was a whole bunch of things I don't know can we wrap up cheating in communication but I was cheated on a few times in my marriage um and so I, I ended the marriage but communication when you said you guys were having communication issues like Uh, Because communication isn't just the words that's coming out of my mouth. It's the tone. It's listening to body languages, all of that. All of that. Yep. So so when you were having the communication issues, what do you think it was? Was it it just, um, you know, how sometimes people like blame the other person? Like, for example, I'm going to give you an example. And so I can clarify my question. It's like. If I give somebody feedback, my, my I have a life coach still, and she's like, maybe don't use the word feedback, maybe use the word request, because feedback kind of gives a person like, it's you, instead of me saying, you know what, I'm actually requesting something. But if I give a person feedback, and they receive it as an attack, right? If I'm giving you feedback, it's like, wait a minute, okay, no, I can't do nothing wrong. I want well, nothing right. I can't do anything right. I'm just this. And it's like, wait a minute. What, uh, I'm just giving you feedback. I mean, what what are some of the communication issues that you guys were having? Was it something along the lines of that, or you weren't being open and vulnerable? And you know, what what were some of the issues you guys were having? So, in the communication, it's a good question. Communication is a loop. Okay, first you have a message, you have a sender sends the message, the receiver receives the message, and the receiver responds to the message, closes the loop. Problem with communication is. It's the loop is not closed because what we don't know how to do in communication is every communication, there is a meaning attached to it. Okay. Every communication, there's a meaning that is attached from the receiver as well. And because we never clarify the meanings, we never, we just assume that they understand the meaning then we don't go to the next steps of communication. And so you say something, I interpret it one way, you interpret it another way. I am going to act based on my interpretation. I am going to attach emotions to it, and then I'm going to act it out. Thus, now, when you see my reaction, my behavior, my interpretation, then you begin to react to that. All of a sudden, the communication gets convoluted. And so now... What I'm not, I'm no longer listening to the message. I'm looking at the messenger. And so so what happens is, is people don't know how to take the messaging from the sender and go through an interpretation process that now I receive what you intended me to receive. Mm -hmm. And now I can respond to that intention based on what you wanted me to receive. But we don't Mm -hmm. take that because we don't know how to do it, all right? Mm-hmm. And so that was the problem. She felt like, you know how a lot of times, you know you know how it is. You know, you think you're right. You want to just win. It ain't like you're trying to understand. You're like, the hell with all that. I just want to win the argument. And then, mm-hmm. then, then the argument gets so convoluted, you don't even know why you're arguing. That's true. You just know, I just got to win. And if that means breaking you down all the way mm-hmm. to win, That's what I'm going to do. And that's what I did. That's what my wife did. And then it becomes, the message becomes unimportant anymore. Mm -hmm. It becomes, I'm going to win. So when people are communicating, I will tell you, like, I I couldn't agree with you more, you know, because it's like, wait a minute, hold on. We're arguing, but it's, are we attacking the problem or we're attacking each other? Like, we got to be attacking the problem here. But when it came to that, and you guys and sitting in the parking lot eating y'all uh six dollar meal up in Wendy's, right? Um, and then y'all said, you know what, we're going to work on this. Now, how did you start? Now, how did you actually say, you know what, we're going to do this? Like, what was the commitment to each other? So first off, let me let me go beyond that. Okay, 
um, you know, we both at that point made a decision. I often tell my students that the word decision comes from the Latin root word, uh, meaning to cut off, all right, to cut off any other yep. options. So we decided that we, you know what, that we had never invested in our relationship. We had never invested in communication and learning how to communicate with her, uh, her style of communication, my style of communication. We'd never done that. So that was the first thing we decided, look, this is what we're going to do. But the, but the other thing we did, and this was amazing, we sat there and we came up with a conflict resolution system that was so amazing. But it was mm-hmm. so simple. When we mm-hmm. came up with it, we didn't think that it would be groundbreaking. We mm-hmm. didn't think that. We just thought it could help us get to tomorrow. Yep. You know, get to tomorrow. But mm-hmm. what I realized in its in, in its its simplistic nature, mm-hmm. it allowed both parties to get their point across. And then the other party was responsible for understanding it in the way that we did it. It was mm-hmm. simple. So, and, and I, without going into it, I don't want to spend your whole time going into it, mm-hmm. but the way it works is that the per, the sender gets to send the message, mm-hmm. but the receiver only gets to ask one question. Okay. And in that one question, then the solving of the problem happens. But once you ask the one question and it's already scripted out the question, the sender then has to help the receiver solve the problem. Because you know how a lot of times people tell you what's wrong with you? And then they don't want to, they just want to tell you what's wrong with you, but they don't want to tell you how to help me solve it. Well, what can I do? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Just fix it. Just fix it. Right? Mm-hmm. And so with the system, both parties focus you because you said it. Both parties focus on the problem together. It was amazing. Um, mm-hmm. And um, and so first thing we did was decide. Mm-hmm. Then we came up with the actual simple solution that we use. Because a lot of times people can decide, but if they don't have any tools, if mm-hmm. they don't know what to do, you can decide all yep. day. You might mm-hmm. want to build a house, but if you ain't got no hammer, you ain't got nails, you don't have wood, mm-hmm. you can't mm-hmm. So mm. yeah, so that's that's how that's how it it began it begin to take hold. And then what happened was the law of inertia took over. Object in motion started to stay in motion, and we started doing it and doing it. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I wanted to do, it, wanted to get better. And then we started commending each other on the effort, and that was powerful too. That was when I began because I began learning all this time fifteen years ago, learning about all of this stuff. And then as I progressed, love languages how mm-hmm. she wanted me to speak that for her. I didn't have a clue what that was. I didn't know what that mm-hmm. was till I learned it. Mm-hmm. And then I understood why I would think that if I bought her a gift, I, I mean, I spent all this money, you should be mm-hmm. happy. Mm-hmm. Well, that wasn't her love language. And I didn't mm-hmm. understand that. And so once we begin, once we got into, once we began saying, we're going to invest in this relationship, once I begin to invest in it, I begin learning it just like I learn learn what I do today. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, so that was it. okay. Now I ain't gonna let you skip over when you said I ain't even know this, so I ain't gonna let you skip over. You said you were on the biggest loser now. That was I I used to love that show, so I had no idea that you were on the biggest loser. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was on the biggest loser season three. Um, really? If you go back, go and, and you I talk about that. Uh, I show him gonna go look for it. <laughs> go look it up. Go look me. Go look me up then. Um, and that was uh, that was dang now, but it's seventeen years ago. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Um, well, about maybe a week or two ago, maybe two weeks ago, I think. So I have posted something on my Instagram and okay. it kind of, you know, it went out there, you know, it kind of went viral. And then next thing you know, I have almost 2000 comments from a Ooh. lot of, yes, a lot of butthurt men calling me all kinds of names too, right? I think there's no way in hell I could go back and read 1800 something comments, right? But some of the comments I did see and they were like, you know, someone was like, you bitch, it, it was crazy. And I, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and comment to everybody's comment, but right. what, what I have, what I'm seeing, you know, cause all I did was repost a clip 
of a podcast, right? A video podcast. And I responded with my own uh, opinion, which is not far left or far right. It was just, hey, um, it, you know, um, it was it was about femininity and masculinity. That's really, really what it was about. Okay. Now, but what I'm seeing is this whole culture of this toxic male masculinity and and I'm it's like dividing us. And then it's, you know, we're going way over here. Women are going way over here. Men are going way over here. And it's just like, wait a minute, we're further and further getting further apart. Right. We're becoming divided. So what do you think is contributing, in your opinion, to this whole toxic culture? And it, how can we bridge the gap to bring us back together? Oh, that's a great question, because do you know, first off, yeah, there's toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. um, um, but the problem is, is that there are prognosticators, influencers, people who are benefiting from the division of yep. couples and love. Yep. Their YouTube channels are built on that division. You get a coach, Ken, that comes along. Um, I always tell people I get criticized every single day. I'm super, I'm pretty even handed. You know, I, I will. But the funny thing about it is women and I know women are listening. They are just as ardent as the men are. They are just as toxic as men are, because I can put up a post because I have a formula. I do 70 cent content towards telling women about how men are. Mm -hmm. Um, thirty percent telling men how women are, and okay. part of it is is um, I was just speaking on when I first got started on who I was, and so I get all these women on the seventy percent of my content that say, "Yeah, go, Coach Ken." Soon as I tell them that a man wants this, they will tell me, "Well, women, women want it too," and this and that. And what I realized is this: I realized that I don't even, I rarely even comment. I comment every now and then, but I don't have time because I'm building and building. Mm -hmm. But I realized this, that people are speaking from a lens of pain. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that most of the people who are, who are speaking, they, mm -hmm. they are commenting from this lens of pain. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't comment much. Like a, men comment because they've been hurt. OK, but this is the way. And so there's a thing called confirmation bias. What we do is look for people who can confirm the biases we already have. Yep. See, I told you all men cheat. I told you they wasn't worth a damn. I told you that women see for the streets. I told you, <laughs> you know, Jada Pickett. I told you. I mean, Jay. so what I say is what I say is this. I'm coming along as an. I am about relationships. I'm not about money or all. I'm about people living out their dream because that's what I want. I always mm -hmm. tell people, why do you listen to people who don't want the same thing you want? Mm -hmm. Why do yeah. you listen to people who are saying the very opposite, contrary to what you desire? If you desire a relationship, why do you listen to people who talk shit about relationships? Yeah. I'm just, just, I'm just wondering. Mm -hmm. And so this division that we have, I, I say there's a war going on. Yeah. And then there are people like me. I'm not the only one. There are people like me who say, I'm not going to bash people. I'm not, you know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to require everybody to level up. I'm, I'm, I got a platform I've created. I'm doing a whole section in there called Just for Men, teaching mm -hmm. men how to be better. Because people always say to me, you, do, you, you, do you just coach women? I say 70% of my clients are women, 30% are men. I said, but I want you to, I want, I want to give you one piece of thing. I want you to understand this. Women come to me when they want to gain something, new relationship, new perspective. Okay. Men come to me when they don't want to lose something. I want to lose my marriage. I want to lose my lady. I fucked up. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. And so the, my, the, the mentality is different. Now mm -hmm. my coaching is the same, but how you get to me. And so now there are a lot of men who watch my content who don't say much, mm -hmm. but I've created an app, a new app that I am going to bring men and women together. Yeah. And so we can have respectful conversation. We all can get better. And in the process, Hey, I'm, I'm going to put some couples together. Mm-hmm.
I, I love that because I don't bash either. And I, there's nothing that's going to be gained. And one comment that I, you know, will make, like when a man comments on some of my stuff and be, you know, accuse me of whatever, whatever. I'm like, I got one, two, three sons. I got two grandsons. I got two nephews and I'm still daddy's little girl as I approach 50. I'm the last one to put a man down because I do see fault in both. Like we both could be doing better men Absolutely. and women, you know, so it's not a man thing or a woman thing, not at all, you know? So, um, now, since you coach mostly women, and I know they're, like you said, they're trying to get out here and gain a relationship. So I yeah. absolutely, they're looking for love. I actually had a woman ask me once, she was like, well, we're out here working on ourselves. You know, are the men working on themselves? So there was an article early this year. I think it was this year. It was talking about how men, they're seeing more men die alone. I do want your perspective on this, right? So they see more men dying alone, not getting in these long-term marriages because women are leveling up. They're working on themselves. You know, to your point, 70% of your clients are women probably trying to become better because in order yes. to attract a relationship, you do have to have yes. some aspects of yourself to become better. So in these men, like I said, they're coming to you because they don't want to lose something. I yes. would love to see more men come to you so they can gain a healthy relationship as well. But I don't know. If I, got so. I got some. I got some. Oh, okay, good. And I, you know, I don't know if you saw the article about how more and more men are just pretty much for like, you know, dying alone. But what is your take about that? Like, you know, more men are ending up single or are you not even seeing that? Or are you seeing that, you know what, there's still a lot of women that will accept any old behavior and, and men really aren't single or as they get older they they aren't really dying alone. I don't know if you have any opinion on that. I do have an opinion on it. Um, okay. <laughs> I got an opinion on it. Um, I think we have created a culture and I need you to, I have to go back. We've created a culture. I, I did a, I did a video that said men are conditioned not to communicate and women just, rah, rah, rah. and I said, well, everything I say, I bring science to it too. I'm not just, I always tell people I'm smart as hell. Now let's not get it twisted. I said, number one, I said, have, do any of you have sons? They say, yeah. I said, have you ever told your son, don't cry, suck it up? He said, yeah, 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 I, I want him to be strong. I said, but what you've done, how many times, so what you've done, and then what your uncle say, nah, dude, don't cry. And so what we've done is, mm -hmm. growing up, from when a child is one, from one, zero, from the third trimester in his mother's belly to the age of seven years old, his subconscious mm -hmm. mind is being formed. Now, in his subconscious mind, when people tell him, suck it up, he realizes that in speaking about his emotions, mm -hmm. that he is considered weak. And so you wonder when a woman dates a guy at 20, 30, he's been conditioned from a baby, from a youth, not to share his feelings. And so now you get with him and then you expect mm -hmm. him to just share. And so when mm -hmm. I explain to them the conditioning that has happened, has mm -hmm. happened, and you all have conditioned some of your own children to be the exact same way, yet you get mad at the man when he does not communicate. Mm -hmm. So he has to be reprogrammed, reconditioned that communication mm -hmm. is not weak. Communication is good for your mental health. Communication yep. is good for your emotional wellness. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, women come to me because seeking help is not weak. It is mm -hmm. not looked upon as weak. We have to get out of the stigma that men mm -hmm. have been. I had it when I was growing up. I was an mm -hmm. athlete. Don't be no little bitch. Don't cry about it. Mm -hmm. Don't talk yep. about it. Okay. So now I'm coming along. I'm a, I'm a masculine guy. And said, mm -hmm. it's okay for you to cry. It's okay for you to say, look, I'm hurting. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you need to. That's, a, that's why my, men, my male clients are growing. You mm -hmm. need to. It's okay. They're not coming to, and nothing wrong, God, nothing wrong with a feminine guy, but they're not coming to a feminine guy. They're coming to a masculine guy that says, mm -hmm. dude, you need to talk to somebody. Iron sharpens iron. And so, yes, mm -hmm. the, the stigma mm -hmm. of getting help mm -hmm. is important. Okay? Um, yeah. And I think what's happening to men, when they realize, I just can't do it by myself, I can't cope, 
Um, because you think about all the guys in the military that commit suicide. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Yeah. Because they won't, because the military shuns on men looking for help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, yeah. so, so yes, I think that number is growing. But yeah, I mm -hmm. think a lot of men still um, internalize things mm -hmm. uh, where women uh, have been taught that uh, you know what, I should seek help now. Whether they listen to the help or not, that's a different story. That's true. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's true. I know, you know, both, both sexes could definitely do better. Now I would say as a mom to three sons, um, and the how, oldest, how, how do your, um, your sons, uh, oldest one, Ooh, I'll be 27. Uh, you got a 27 year old girl. You're yeah. young. Okay. Okay. No. Ah! Yeah. Oh, he can't stand going out with me. Do you hear me? He says I block him all the time. Women think I'm. I, people have said, you know, hey, is that if your husband is over there? I'm like, husband, that's my son. You know, because he's bearded up and everything. You know, but you know, as and he's uh, to your point, he was a top athlete, number one athlete in the state of Maryland when we lived in Maryland, and he went on to play football in the SEC. So I get it. Um, and he one time had a conversation with me because he did go seek some help. And I probably was one of those women that you are describing, you know, kind of hard. But I never was. Even when he played football, I loved to watch him play football. I never was the type of mom to be like, why you ain't catch that ball? Like, because I was like, I ain't on the field getting hit. You know, I, I never was that type of mom. I never criticized. But I can see how we have are building this culture of raising young men to, you know, suck it up. But I will tell you, I'm doing better with my grandsons because I am like, OK, now I'm, I'm, I get a do over where I'm like, no, don't say that to him. And then my oldest son will be like, ah, really, who is this woman? Because this ain't the woman who raised us. This is a different woman. You were talking about being like my grandson. He's almost eight. And he is grandma's baby, right? He is my baby, baby. And I'm like, don't, don't say that. You know, you're going to hurt his feelings. And my kids be like, and my youngest son, he started laughing one day. He was like, it's, it's so crazy how my grandson, he's like, he's never going to know the real you. And I'm like, you boy, you better leave that baby alone. He knows the real me because I just, I'm not yelling at him. I'm right. not, you know, fussing at him. I think that's very important when we're raising these young men. But on the other side, so here comes my question now. On the other side, um, this culture, I feel like because we're becoming more divided, I feel like internally we're becoming more divided we're more women playing the masculine role right. right and we have we see a little bit and i know and it's not like it, to blame anybody but it, part of the division is like she's more masculine me especially she's more masculine over here and he might be a little bit you know um more feminine over here what do you think women can do to lessen that masculine energy because i i have this book i'm gonna I'm have to show you real quick so I have this book and it's called Ladies Leave Your Dick at Home. Ah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get a copy of that too. <laughs> Send me the link. I mean. Okay. So, and I did it because let me tell you something. I struggled with dating after my marriage, struggled. I went on almost 200 dates in the eight oh, years wow. that I was single. Be and I did not know Coach Ken that it was one, I became an avoidant. OK, I was wasn't born that. Like I said, my parents are still married. I was very secure. But being married to a narcissist changed my attachment style to be an avoidant. Right. Um, so I was going on dates, but I wasn't liking anybody. Um, and then I was running from intimacy. And then, two, I was bringing my dick on every single date I went on. I was competing with the man. I'm like, oh, he got this. I'm a one up him. He got that. I'm a one up him. I'm a show him, but not realizing that that was masculine. So, but it's hard for women like me to not bring our dick everywhere we go. When you're a leader in corporate America, when you're raising three sons, when you're doing all of this. So I know some of these women that you coach probably fall in line with women just like me. So how, how can you help them or give them some type of advice to where they can start to leave their dick at home and then they drawer? Um, the first thing I do, and you're right, I got most of my clients, my my the clients that are women, uh, most of them are super successful. Um, they they figured out the career, um, they figured out raising kids, but the dating part they can't figure it out. And and so one of the things I tell them is 
a man does not want to date himself. And so let me explain it. And, and obviously you wrote this book, so you, you're aware of this. Um, um, see, and but I, I always break things down. So let me break it down. So every human being has this energy, masculine and feminine energy. Mm -hmm. I often say, let me explain it in simplistic terms. Masculine energy is the energy of doing, deadline, goal-oriented, getting it done, getting it mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Feminine energy is the energy of being. Mm -hmm. Being an empower, a nurturer, walking in the flow of creativity of what that looks like. Now, so every human being has both, you know, both masculine and feminine energy. That is why somebody like me who is able to walk into the creative nature that I am and care mm -hmm. about people the way that I do. All right. And then, then I can switch to the masculine. Like, we got to get this shit done. Deadline. Listen, I need y'all. And they say I'm controlling. So I can walk in both worlds. However, mm -hmm. here's the problem. And I'm going to explain it like they probably never heard it. It's mm -hmm. simple. The, we live in a masculine grid. It helps you get the bag, be successful, be over these people you're over. Right. Because mm -hmm. if, if I don't act masculine, they're going to think I'm weak. OK. However, at work. That has helped me propel. The problem is, here's the problem, not the masculine energy. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is when I come home to my person, my guy, okay? I bring the masculine energy home. I do not know how to balance it with mm -hmm. my feminine energy. Because when the man sees it, you're, you're, you're still telling him what to do, what to do. You need to do this. You ain't doing this. And that masculine energy, the reason why it doesn't, why it's so harmful mm -hmm. is because of this. When a man sees masculine energy coming out of another man, mm -hmm. he knows exactly what to do with it. He knows either I confront it or it ain't worth the risk. I'm going to flee from it. Okay. When masculine energy is coming out of his woman, he doesn't know what to do with it. He doesn't know now because he could argue with you, you know, and then you go and you argue all the time to mm -hmm. fight it. Or he could go in his cave and be like, I ain't gonna say shit. Let her do whatever, whatever. All right. Mm -hmm. Either way, he doesn't know what to do with them. And so if he continues to see it. What happens is this uncertainty, this ambiguity of how I handle this. Now, what do I do? I just walk away from it. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. And so mm -hmm. what I teach women is this. No, you don't have to lose that, but you got to learn how to balance that. Okay. And that, and that, and that's, and, and that's the nuance difference. Don't mm -hmm. lose it. Because here's this, y'all, all y'all listening to this. I want you, to, I want, I want, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Because women say to me, Coach, I just want him to lead. I want him to lead to be the leader. <laughs> I, I want him to lead. lead. <laughs> you know what I say? You know what I say? And I said, I want you to think about something. Once you take the leadership role, he can never take it from you. You have to relinquish it. You have to mm. give it away. But how many of you are willing to give it away? You only willing to give it away with stipulations. Well, if he does it the way that I want him to do it, if he does this, if he does this, then I'll let him lead me. And then mm -hmm. most likely he ain't going to do it the way you do it. And you're going to keep that leadership, that leadership mantle. And you're going to be in a relationship talking about, I want somebody to lead me, but you're unwilling to be led. You, I look, you ain't lying. Um, I, I tell, I tell women that as well. If you, if you keep leading or if you keep taking control of everything or if you keep doing everything, you will always do everything. And that's just a fact. But I will say for, look, my, I, when I was married, I was, tr I tried to let my ex-husband lead, but he was leading us to hell, you know? And I was like, this ain't you. And when women, when we feel like, wait a minute, hold on horsey. I'm telling you when a woman feels like he's not doing the best job in leading we will take over. And especially a woman with some masculine energy. I wasn't raised in a household where my mother was masculine. My mother's Chinese. She's born and raised in Taiwan. My dad is black. You know, I, till this day, I see my father being the provider and my mother just being the feminine energy. I see that, but they raised us to be very masculine. Make sure you have your own blah, 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 blah. 
So when I got married, I thought I'd be married forever. I'm telling you, it's hard to allow a man to come in and lead you when you question his leadership skills. So now I'm not in that type of relationship. I am in a very balanced relationship, but a lot of times my dick would be like, can I, and can it'll I, come can out. I can I respond to that, please? Go ahead. Go ahead. You done said a couple of things. I wanted to stop you like right, right now. You said he wasn't leading, so I took over. Yep. That's what you said. I didn't I say it. Did. Mm -hmm. That's just like many women, they take over. They take over. Mm -hmm. And so instead of, instead of making it collaborative, learning how to communicate what you're thinking, instead mm -hmm. of doing all of that, <clears throat> mm -hmm. many women just take over. Yep. Just take over. They don't create the, an environment where I explain, because they don't want to communicate that here's what I'm feeling, here's what I'm mm -hmm. seeing. They don't, because they don't know how, or they don't mm -hmm. want to. Um, so they say it is much easier, an easier mm -hmm. role to just do it, take over. Mm -hmm. But what that does is it creates resentment in the man. I know. Mm -hmm. So, it's so what? What is the solution? The solution is communicate all the way through it. If I feel like I need to take over, me and my wife have, we communicate well now. And I'm, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you a real live example. And and I'm you know I I've led my wife, and most things I've done at work, some of them have been flops, but. She she said I I proved myself as a leader. So during COVID, I had my house is like a mixed use house, like business and living. So my wife wanted to during COVID we remodel, and she wanted to do more living space. She was like, because we were gonna move, but we didn't. And uh, she's like, let's just renovate. All right. So one room in our house, room over there, I wanted to turn it into a studio. All right, because of where I was going in my business. And I was turning, I was transitioning and I didn't, and my wife didn't want to do it. She did not want to do it. She was like, oh, oh hell no, you, we've been doing this too long. And the way we work, I communicate with her about what I feel. I want to turn this and here's why I want to do it. So this room, I didn't know why, I didn't know what it was going to turn into. I knew I needed to do it, but I didn't have all the answers. And I went to my wife and I said this, I, said, I sat her down and I said, listen, I don't know why I don't have all the answers. I don't know. I don't know the answers. I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm going to follow. I don't know what it's going to equate to, but mm -hmm. I need to do this because I'm going down this path mm -hmm. with this content creation and I need to do it. I, I just, but I cannot do it without your blessing. I won't. Mm -hmm. She thought about it for a couple of days. And she, mm -hmm. to this day, we laughed because she said, go ahead and do it. And and that room has made us a million dollars. And I always say, I say, listen, I said, so we were laughing about it the other day. I bought her a new car. I was like, oh, oh, oh do you want the car? Oh, but, but you didn't want to do the room. I'm joking, right? <laughs> and, I said, and I asked her, why did you do it? She said, because you communicated to me Mm -hmm. Everything I needed to know. Your okay. desire, you didn't have all the answers, but you mm -hmm. talked me, or you talked me all the way through it. Mm -hmm. And as the answers appeared, you gave mm -hmm. it. So I go back to communication. And so we laugh about it now, but I didn't have all the answers. I didn't know where I was leading her mm -hmm. to, but I communicated along the way. And I mm -hmm. said to those women, be willing to communicate. But you know why they ain't willing to do that? Yeah. Because communication is too hard. It's too hard mm -hmm. for them. They ain't never been taught how to do it. And so it's better to just take off. And and, and men got their own stuff too. Yeah, mm -hmm. shit going on too. Mm -hmm. But all of it boils down to, to that. So mm. I will say, you know what? In order for us to let go like that, we have to trust. So your wife trusts you, sure. you know, and when you were just meeting somebody, like to me, you just going on a date with somebody and mm -hmm when you're just like, okay, you meet him online or whatever he's make, if he can make plans and he can confirm them, like, I don't know how many times I would tell women, look, if he doesn't confirm the plans, because I have naturally curly hair, if you don't want me to show up on the date looking like a wet poodle, boo, you are gonna have to confirm 24 hours in advance uh, because I need time. My hair takes about 10 hours to dry. So if it, if I, 
Yes, yes, it takes 10 hours. So I, therefore, I have to know, you know, so it to me, a good, strong, like, okay, he might be a good leader. He might be a masculine man or a provider, whatever. If he can, little simple thing, plan the date, tell me where to be, confirm the date, bam. Like that's huge for women. And uh, Coach Ken, I'm telling you, a lot of men aren't doing that. Like if, if I could coach men to say, or tell men, let me say, if I could tell men how to get a woman to like lock her down and, and her get and any woman, any woman out here who's, you know, anything. I'm talking Lisa Ray, because I saw her having dating issues. Nene Leakes, I, I saw her having dating issues. If a man just come up to her and be like, you know what, I'd really like to take you out. How about Thursday night, 8 p.m., such and such, okay? He confirms Wednesday night. Like Coach Ken, it's probably a whole bunch of draws is going to drop just because he made a plan, he stuck with it, and he confirmed. We're not seeing a lot of that. And so to me, it's like, um, can you lead? I mean, that's that's just something basic. So, and I know you about to say something. Go ahead and say something about my example. But to me, that was a like a huge either green flag or red flag. Oh my right? God. Oh my God. I, I can't do this. I cannot. <laughs> okay. 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 I okay, B. I got a question for you. Okay. All right. You said that's a simple thing, right? Yep. Okay. Now, do you tell him? Have you communicated that thing, those things that you just communicated to me, do you communicate it to him prior to? Prior to? Yeah, prior to him doing it, making it, do you communicate to him and say, uh, mm-hmm. if you, uh, uh, hold on, hold on, because okay. I'm, I'm about to go somewhere with it. Okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you communicate, just answer me, do you communicate that or you expect him to know that? If we're if we have had conversations, I have no 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 qualms about it. I can communicate it, but I'm talking like first date, so I'm um, no probably. Oh, so he not doesn't yet, know. But you know, just to say on a first date, yes, no, okay. I did not communicate on the first date. Okay, okay, okay. Now, what if he said on the first date, I, you know what? I expect her to rub my back. On the first day, no, not 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 naked, not naked, but but when we are together, I want her to rub my back. I want her to rub my arms. You know, I want her to make sure I'm good and and um, ask me why I need to go to the bathroom, pick me up, and go to the concession stand. Just mm-hmm. whatever. But you know, he's never told you that. Mm-hmm. Now, should you be penalized because you don't know what his desire, what he needs? No, I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't be penalized for that. I didn't know his needs. Correct. So should he be penalized because he does not know your needs? Because we're assuming that mm-hmm. everybody has been through the same dating process, like school. We're assuming that everybody knows the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. We're assuming those things. And mm-hmm. yet you say it's a red flag because mm-hmm. he doesn't know. And so it becomes punitive. This is what I see throughout coaching. Mm-hmm. It becomes punitive we punish people because they can't read our minds. Yet we are not willing to communicate with them. Mm-hmm. So, would you suggest a woman who, let's say, they just matched on Bumble? Even though I don't really recommend. I don't like Bumble. I have to tell you, I'm not a fan. I thought Bumble was a good one, though, because you you're in control. And that's the thing. That's the coach kid. That's the thing. I don't want to be women. in control. I don't what? want it. I, when you are a woman who is literally trying hard to not be so masculine, somebody like me who is very, I'm telling you, I'm very, oh, I'm very masculine, but I have worked on it big time. I don't want to be in control. And I felt like, I feel like Bumble, because you have to reach out. And then a lot of times what I saw on Bumble was because you have to initiate the conversation, you are carrying the conversation. It's like, I don't want to carry the conversation. I want you to carry the conversation, you know? And so that's what I found. That's why I, me personally, I don't recommend Bumble. I actually met my boo on Match. Match.com. I told my youngest son, I met him online and he busted out laughing. But yeah, I met him on (laughs) Match.com. Yeah, I met met him on it. I I believe in dating apps. I I, I, I I do too. That's a a conversation for another day, but but okay. I do too. Now, but when you meet somebody, y'all match and like in a woman, 
and you know, he asked, let's say he's leading the conversation. He says, you know what? I think I would like to get to know you a little bit better. You know, so I, I firmly believe in just a quick coffee date or a tea date because I've gone on, look, I said, like I said, I went on 200 dates, trust and believe. And some of them dates, I could have just stayed at home and watched Dateline, like probably 75% of them dates. I could have just stayed at home with my dog. But I still went. And so therefore, I don't believe in like going on long dates anymore. Girl, go out here and see if your energy's mesh first and see if he is who he say he is. And, you know, see how you feel around him. And then maybe I can go on more dates. But if you're just going on a simple coffee date or a tea date, you know, how, how does a woman even suggest to a man like, hey, babe, I want you to. Should she tell him I need you to confirm the date? And, hey, I need you to ask me out. I need you to plan the date, you so know, Communication. Oh, okay. you you got I got I got to tell you what, what, what why this works. So what I tell women is, don't tell a man what you expect, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you like. Okay. I love it when a man calls me and, and makes the day. I, I love it when he's got everything planned out. That just gets my heart just racing. Notice mm -hmm. what I just did. Mm -hmm. That's a different interpretation mm -hmm. versus, you know, I want a man, a man got to call me. He got to call me in advance. He take me 11 miles and dry my hair. And, <laughs> and the other thing, now, not only he call me, he better confirm 24 hours in advance. That's what I want. Notice what the, <laughs> notice the difference in the interpretation and energy. Mm -hmm. I love it, man. I love it when he gives me 24 hours notice because my hair takes 11 hours to dry. I feel so yeah. respected. Notice mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. The man says he, he's making mental notes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now it ain't like your ass better do this or mm -hmm. else. Do mm -hmm. you see the difference? Oh, I definitely see the difference. So let's say that she does that. Let's say that she communicates because I do believe in community. I do believe at that as well. I do believe you can get like my daddy has always told me, like my degree is in English. My daddy said, you don't have to get anybody to do anything by cursing at them or whatever. He's like, use those words that you you don't have to cuss anybody out. But I still be cussing people out sometimes. But either way, <laughs> my daddy, my daddy told me you ain't got to cuss nobody out. No. But either way, I do believe in building people up. I do 100 percent. You get more sugar than with that approach. You just described now what if she says that and he doesn't confirm would you coach her to say hey go still go on the date and just show up or you don't go no i would still go on the date because he may because remember there's a thing okay. called neuro associative conditioning okay we have to condition people on how to love us mm -hmm. right so the, I don't want to get too deep for y'all. That's a topic for another day of how you mm -hmm. program a subconscious mind. You ever you ever been driving somewhere mm -hmm. and you don't really know how you got there? You just know your your, your mind just know turn right here, turn. Mm -hmm. You knew where you were going, but you had a lot of other stuff. I'm the kids. I got to do my mm -hmm. show. I got to do all that stuff. Well, your mm -hmm. subconscious mind is responsible for ninety percent of your reality, right? Mm -hmm. So, but you program the subconscious mind through repetition and habitual behavior. Mm -hmm. So. You tell him once, but, and he may not have fallen through with everything because mm -hmm. just because he forgot, because he hasn't been conditioned to this. But then when you get on the day, what you do is remind him of what you told him. Mm -hmm. You know, you remind him. Okay. Um, and you remind him and say, and so, and, and what happens is, it's all the reminder is just the conditioning. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people like, he ain't doing that first time. So you know what? I'm done. Mm -hmm. How many times have we not done something the first time? Because mm -hmm. we're not conditioned to doing it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I would tell people. Okay. So when women, I know you, you, cause you coach women. I coach men women? and women too. Oh yeah, so I mean, I, I, I meant to say a lot. I of need women. to tell you that. I meant, I meant to say that. My apologies. So when, when, when women, because I see women with these, I see stuff. I see men with these unrealistic expectations as yes. well. You know, and it's like, um, you know, he want her to look like this, no stomach, perky boobs. You know, fat ass, which I ain't got. Like I was like, if my my ex husband wanted big booty when he was cheating on me. He was cheating on big booty women with, with on me with big booty women, right? And I was like, do you ain't see all them Chinese people? 
in at the wedding you, you, i mean you saw my chinese mama sitting right there and all her chinese friends no. and, then, and then he complained that i won't fry no chicken i'm like i will stir fry some chicken but i ain't frying i'm like i know you saw my chinese mother and her and friends back there but anyways it's like we got to stop having these unrealistic expectations my daddy said he told you you would he made my because he said he's cheating on me because I don't fry any chicken. I was like, that ain't some bullshit. That's a lie, right? I mean, I don't fry chicken, but I could have been yeah. Harris Peter and I could have bought some fried chicken. Ain't like they don't have fried chicken restaurants. But anyway, oh. with the unrealistic expectations, women. Oh, he must be over six five, and I'm like, uh, why, why? Yeah, or men with their, you know, what do you tell people like? To be able to, because the older we get, I mean, you know, when you were 22, yeah, you could you could ask for everybody's body to look a certain way. But, you know, the older we get, people aren't working out as Absolutely. much. But, no, you you get, know, don't, I don't look like I did when I was 20. I neither do I. Um, thank no. God, though. But, you know, what what would you tell them? Like, you know, uh, I still have, I, I still write it all in my book. My man got to be this, this, and this. And I'm okay with that. But you can't date to your preferences, okay? But what do you tell them, like, uh, about attracting a relationship that that's not everything on their list? I say that what you've done by writing a list, many people, I said you've created an illusion that you've learned to live with. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because we think that if I write this list, mm -hmm. it's going to tell me the things that are going to make me happy. Because you only write, you only put the things on the list because you believe they're going to bring you some type of happiness. Oh, if he's 6'5", I'm going to be happy. He got a six-figure job, I'm going to be happy. And you could get all of that and still not be happy. Mm -hmm. What I tell people is I have a methodology. And I tell people, I said, first of all, dish the damn list. And then I said, tell me now, I said, tell me 10 things that mm -hmm. you must have in a relationship. Mm -hmm. okay? Not nine, not eight, not 11, 10 mm -hmm. things. And then when you tell me the 10 things, beside the 10 the, 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 the ten things, we go through this process. Tell me why you must have it. Mm -hmm. I didn't say why you want it, why you must have it. Mm -hmm. And so once I once I peel back the layers, because because if you tell me you have to have this, I need to know where that comes from. Mm -hmm. And then I realize that you only want this because you heard that shit on YouTube or some other body, some of your friends who ain't in good relationships told you he got to be six feet. And so mm -hmm. now I get you to question everything you've ever believed. And so once we go deep to the things you really must have now, let's let's focus on this, because then now we can start our manifestation and attraction from a point mm -hmm. of truth. Yeah, I will tell you, I do. OK, so I had a list when I was married. I wrote a list um, and what was on my list for some of the most. Bad I was, I well, well, like, what was on your list? What was on your list? <laughs> he had to have a paid off Honda Accord. <laughs> Damn. Oh God! Why? Well, why, 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 why? Why Honda Accord though? Because let me. It's a it's a reason for that list that I had many years ago. It was because my ex before him, um, and he may he rest in peace. And um, uh, you know, I greatly loved him. However, you know, I felt like he was a little bit more materialistic. Um, like he had. A very smart young man and uh, probably, you know, one of my greatest loves, but he bought nice things in, I'm like flashy cars and stuff. And I didn't, I'm like, I'm Chinese and black. My mama's cheap. Like if you ain't been raised by a Chinese woman, you just don't know my mama cheap. Okay. So I didn't grow up having the, the name brand stuff or anything like that. Like we didn't have that. And so when that relationship ended, I went ahead and created a list and something that was on, it was a paid off on the court. I wanted his mother to live at least one state away. I didn't want her to be around a corner because I had had that in the previous relationship. Not that she was a bad woman, but it's hard to grow when you got family in your relationship, right? Um, I also had things that just were, oh, he want, I wanted him to be my frat brother, all this other stuff, things that didn't matter. What I forgot to put on that list was things about his character, like honest, loyal, great communicator, not a narcissist, 
you know, things, not a cheater, things like that. I forgot and put that on my list. Um, but you know what? I got everything, every, even down to the paid off Honda Accord and being my frat brother. I married that. No BS. But again, I forgot the important thing. So when I made my new list, in this relationship that I'm in right now, I included characteristics like honest, loyal, has the ability to travel, right? Because I'm big into traveling. Um, and I got everything on that list. So I do believe in manifesting because I know you use that word. I 100% believe I in that. And I, and I agree. You need to look at that list and ask yourself, why is that mess on my damn list? You know, why is that mess? You don't need that, you know? So I agree with you. Um, now, with the, okay, so my current relationship and, you know, manifesting that, um, I will say you, I see a lot of women trying to manifest a, a great partner. Well, you know what, before we move on to that, let me just say women, let me tell you something. And I'm going to say this as PG as I possibly can say this because my kids listen to this and my daddy, I say I was a daddy's book girl. I once uh, was in, in, intimate, intimate. Um, with somebody who was six, seven and, um, y'all, it was, it was smaller than my pinky. Um, and it was traumatic. It was very traumatic. I almost had to go to therapy because I had never in my life seen a baggy condom and a regular size condom. I never seen one, like when you put it on and it's like hanging off by thread and I had to hold it on. So it stayed on. So the, the height, let me just say the height has absolutely not this, the shoe size, the hand size, like it has absolutely nothing to do with what you think you're going to get when the lights go off. I'm just going to say that I was, I was traumatized. I almost had to go to therapy. I was oh, like, this you ain't you had real. To hold it on. I had to hold it in place. Okay. You know, I could go so many ways with that, but I <laughs> Uh, it, and, the, and the thing is he was straight from the motherland it was no dilution there it was he was straight from the motherland I thought maybe something was wrong with it but yeah I didn't I wasn't um physically active with anybody else for a while after that because I was I was thoroughly traumatized so that those lists girl take take the height off I'm just saying take it off <laughs> now being that you and your wife, so this was a question I was going into, like a, a healthy relationship, because you and your wife have been married 22 years. Uh -huh. So if you were to give somebody really good advice, because I was going to talk about, you know, um, starting over, because I know by the grace of God, you are not in a position where you're starting over like people like me, starting over in love and really trying to find the great formula that works for them today. What kind of advice would you give someone to be, you know, to say, you know, this is what a healthy relationship is, and this is how you maintain it, attract it and maintain it. I would say that you cannot profit from something you have never invested in. You know, if I if I don't if I don't invest in the stock market, I can't get any profit from it, you know? And so if you don't invest in being better, becoming better, becoming a better version of yourself, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. not going to reap the benefits from becoming a better version of yourself. And so that mm -hmm. part, I would say, listen, we get training on everything else. You get yeah. training on your job. You get training how to drive a car. You get trained. You get a new homeowner's manual when you buy a new house. You get training, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But why is it that relationships are the only things that we just expect it to work because we feel a certain way, because we're in love? And we get no training on conflict resolution, no training mm -hmm. on communication, no training on love languages, no training on attachment styles, no training on any of that. And yet we expect it to work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. So what so I would I tell people is invest in getting better, understanding your partner, invest in the relationship, invest in yourself. Uh, there's this popular relationship coach out here. Uh, very popular. She's a, I don't know if she's a, psychotherapy, something like that. She is a medical doctor and something. Um, she's been on, I'm not going to say her name, you know, um, and I've said this on one of my other shows. So I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, talk about her sure. in particular, sure. but one thing like she's beautiful. You've seen, trust and believe you've seen her out here because she's been everywhere. One thing that I noticed her coaching is she coaches from her fears. She always talks about how to keep your man from not cheating. 
right? And that's like the top of the things that she talks about. And then, but if you ever hear her really talk, she talks about how she has a very anxious attachment style and how her greatest fear is a man cheating on her. And I'm like, well, she's coaching from her fears and yeah. not coaching really to, you know, from a place of being secure or to teach people to have a healthy, thriving relationship. Right. And so I'm like, I don't have any fears, but um, in a relationship, because I feel like your fears, you know, you're going to manifest your fears. If that's what you focus on, that's what shall be. But for people in that mindset, like, you know, who have been cheated on, you know, like I said, I was cheated on in my marriage, but who have been cheated on. um, do, do you think there's a way to cheat proof your relationship? No. What I think is, I think people make choices, make mm -hmm. decisions. I think you can be everything to a person and they may decide that I'm going to cheat. And, that, and women cheat just as much as men. I mean, yeah. I, there was a study out there that said 23% of men cheat, 19% of women cheat. I don't know if it's true or not. But I will say this. You know what? Not cheating or being uh, faithful is a choice. Mm -hmm. I, I choose to it because the reason I know, the reason I say that, I, I've been with the same woman. I've been married twenty years and been with mm -hmm. with without. I haven't been with another woman in twenty five years. Mm -hmm. So th I, that's a choice. I mean, you know, women come on to me. I mean, they like mm -hmm. they be in my DMs and I show my wife. We laugh about it. Mm -hmm. I said it's a choice. And so, you know, I did a whole, I, I, interview, I was interviewed in somebody's podcast talking about man whores, and I broke down cheating, the mm -hmm. idea of cheating, what it is, because I'm on a show on MTV called mm -hmm. Unfaithful Caught in the Act. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, I, and I used to break down on the show to contestants about cheating the, because it all comes from somewhere. I mm -hmm. mean, but it's a choice. Mm -hmm. So can you prove it that means to say that is that the most powerful thing god gave human gave man was the power to choose yep and see i cannot if god can't alter your choice chooses mm -hmm. not to i definitely can't you have to choose me every day choose to be faithful mm -hmm. choose to be whole in, in, in all of that i mean and so no there is no way to foolproof somebody. No, it could happen to anybody. Now, do you think that, you know, the saying once a cheater, always a cheater? And I know, like, I know you're saying it's a choice. Uh, but one thing that she was also talking about, like, if the person has cheated in their past relationships, I'm like, there's probably a whole lot of people, but you should pay attention to that. Um, but that to me says, well, then they can't change. But what do you think? Do you think that if they cheated before in other relationships, I mean, does that mean they're always going to cheat? I cheated 26 years ago. Or that way I say 25 years I've been faithful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, me and her was together, but I, I let her one day we would come on and talk our story, tell our story. But I used to be that guy. I mean, I'm lying and cheating and slipping and dipping and doing or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but to suggest all, once a cheater, always a cheater, that's like saying, um, mm -hmm. you know, once, you know, if you're not good with money, you're going to always be bad with money. Mm -hmm. You know, so that doesn't make sense. The human mm -hmm. being evolves every seven years, right? Mm -hmm. Evolution happens. We evolve with a new mindset sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I don't cheat. Okay. Years ago, did I? Yeah. So to, to that theory is flawed. Yeah. Because in this flaw, because every bad trait that she has, will she always have it the rest of her life, even if she wants to change it? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Uh, the premise is flawed because people change. Yeah. You've seen people change in your life. Absolutely. No. You know, I mean, I wasn't always perfect. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a saint. OK, I ain't no saint. Um, so I have invested into myself to your point. I have invested into myself and yes, I have improved. Um, and 
we would hope that people grow and mature. Um, you know, but I too believe I, I, I'm like you, I don't believe that you can cheat proof your relationship. Right. Um, I did a real, like how to keep your man from cheating. And I was like, Bitch, you can't, you know, because he is going to do what he is going to do, but can we sometime push somebody away? Yes. Oh, I believe that. Yes. Yeah. I think you can push somebody away. Mm-hmm. I think there are a lot of, uh, stimul- stimulating factors mm-hmm. that can contribute to it. Yes. Can you can you lay the groundwork for it to 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 make it faster? Yes, absolutely. You can be the catalyst because if you don't give a man sex, you don't give him no sex. I know one guy. He he got sex three times in a whole year. What? He's my client. What the hell can I tell him? Is he married? He's in his relationship from her. Like he only got booty three times in one year. Three times this year. Ooh, and it's damn near November. This year. And he comes to me, and I'm the one who coached him through his divorce to this new woman. We manifested her. She's wonderful. They used to have sex prior to, um, but she don't have sex. So I'm coaching him through that now. But, you know, but what do I say? I mean, that God, God made us all sexual beings. I mean, I got that thing hanging between my legs for a reason. And what it is, is obviously to procreate. Yeah. Um, but God being the uh, the benevolent God, he says, all right, it's going to feel good too once you get it. I mean, you know, because if it didn't feel good, you, you wouldn't want to procreate. I have seen where people's sexual desires just aren't on the same They're page. Not. I agree. You know, but three, three times. times. And he's like, yo, dude, I'm a white guy. My thing ain't but this big, you know, and she talking about, oh, it hurt. He he looking at her like, right. They could. Maybe they older and maybe he's related to the man that I um that I went on a date with. But he's, but... He's, a, he's a little dude. And so oh, okay. he's like, he's like, so um, my point for saying that is mm. there are factors that could lead to uh, an outcome, but still, mm-hmm. it's still choice. Um, wow. But if my wife didn't give me sex, um, would would I be primed to cheat? But I work with, mm-hmm. I got 1.2 million followers all over. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are beautiful women. Mm-hmm. Would, would, would that set the stage? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it'd still be a choice for me to say, I, I don't want to do yeah. that. You know, would I mm-hmm. would I go on Pornhub? Um, mm-hmm. um, probably. I mean, I'm just, we're just talking real talk. Yeah, yeah. This no, real shit, real. real shit is yeah. happening in real relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I definitely agree. I, I, I do. When you, you can put your man or woman in a position, you can, <laughs> you absolutely can. If you are withheld holding sex or for a man, if you're not really emotionally connected with your woman, she's coming to you and she's sure. not feeling like she can come to you next thing you know what happened we got oh we got our work husband he like tell me all about it i'm here for you you know next thing you know we confiding in him where we're supposed to supposed to be building that emotional connection with our man we can't go to him so we're going to somebody else next thing you know yes and then <laughs> next thing butt- you know the work husband <laughs> be knocking your back out <laughs> <laughs> and yes, he will. Yes, he will. And you're right, though. So, well, then in your relationship, do you guys have like um, set boundaries to say, hey, well, you know, in this in this marriage to prevent X, Y, Z or, you know, or standards to say we're going to be going on a date once a week or something like that. And then, no, you can't communicate with so and so. I mean, do you have those type of boundaries? Yeah, we have really boundaries. Um, but, okay. the, but the boundaries we have we created them for ourselves. Like I created the boundaries. My, my thing was, I told my wife, we have these things called relationship diagnostics. Well, we went to Jamaica, we go twice a year, mostly once a year now, where we, where we scrutinize our relationship. We have this, this thing in, in, my, in our book called The Canyon Culture. Um, we, we actually created a relationship diagnostic where the last one was when we did in June, this year in, 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 in Jamaica, where we go over kind of the stuff that could make us better. And, and, and every time we had that damn thing, I always get mad about something because she'll say something I'm like, damn, I thought I was doing good. But, but she was like, you are doing good, but still you want to improve. And the one things that one of the boundaries that I have, if, if somebody inboxes me something that might be 
off in nature or a woman, you know, not mm -hmm. sexual, because they don't do it like that. They might nope. say, oh, you're a handsome guy. Um, your wife is super, you know. Right, right. So what I do is show it to my wife. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, but that's my boundary. That's my mm -hmm. thing. I'm okay. going to show you every day. Because I get a, I get 20 DMs a day, but most of them about help. They mm -hmm. won't help in their relationship. They don't want to get mm -hmm. with me. But mm -hmm. sometimes... No, I'm still, okay. kind of, I'm still kind of a good looking dude, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Being transparent. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's, okay. that's how it works. Okay. Well, then I'm going a, I'm to a wrap up with this because I know. Hey, I'm we know. We know already. I, said, I know, right? But I've got one last question because I know my girlfriend going to choke me out if I don't ask you. This is a simple question. She want to know where you get your uh, glasses from. Ah, <laughs> love your tell glasses her. Game. <laughs> tell her okay first i gotta tell you a quick story quick story quick story mm -hmm. i started doing this content right before covid i never wore glasses 2020 vision and um so what happens with my, the, the screen on the phones was small i couldn't hardly read i noticed that the words were i couldn't read the start could, the words were getting hard to read so i got me some readers from the drugstore i was like oh hell no I can't look like this. So what I did was I went out there and tried to find some cool ass readers. Mm -hmm. I don't wear glasses. These are readers. Mm -hmm. So when I'm yep. on, I can see the words. And so I get them, tell her, I get them from, um, I got three places, but tell her, go to Vogue Glam, Vogue Glam. And it's a place called Z-Law, Z-E-E-L-O-L. Okay. Those I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell her because she loves your glasses. She absolutely loves them. So, Coach Ken, I want to give you an opportunity to go over anything that you'd like to uh, close us up with. Um, I'd like to say this, that if you're listening and you want coaching and you want to get better, number one, um, you can follow me on any platform. I'm on all social media platforms at Coach. Ken, K-E-N, Canyon, C-A-N-I-O-N. Follow me, um, inbox me, um, mm -hmm. if you, and I can direct your path and tell you what where you should go because I'm building a community of people, uh, men and women, who, who just want to be better. And then in the process, I'm introducing you. Well, I want to thank you tremendously for being oh, on Let's Be Mindful. Me. I absolutely love chatting with you. So we will post all of your information in the show notes. So thank you very much. And thank you to the listeners today. So everyone have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all.